notes within the app so that you can use that and check if you, the things are working at your end or not. So before I begin, let me take the privilege to introduce the trainer for today. Today I have uh, Mrs. Dibyani Kapoor as a trainer. She is an educator, an author, a trainer, a resource person, and an ardent social worker. She carries a rich experience of 25 years in the field of education. She has worked with some of the renowned names in the education sector, DAV schools, Amity, Educom Solutions, and many more. An alumni of Queens Mary and St. Stephen College, Delhi, Mrs. Kapoor is an expert in humanity and teaching English language. Her research in education sector has led to many breakthroughs and innovation. She her innovation in QCT, quality, quality Circle Time, and participative pedagogy are her main contributions. Since 2008, Mrs. Kapoor has been conducting various capacity building workshops for teachers in areas of humanities, stress management, motivation, and other generic areas of academics. She has conducted more than 100 capacity building workshops to empower educators, transforming their roles from a teacher to facilitator and a mentor in teaching and learning process. She is currently head of academics and research, head of academics research and development at Skill Tree Consortium. With that, I invite our trainer for today. Over to you, ma'am, for the presentation. A very good evening to all of you, and thank you so much, Ankesh, for giving me this platform to interact with educators who are. In today's scenario, the real soldiers and vanguards of the education system today. So today's topic is effective pedagogical strategies for teaching social sciences in virtual classrooms. So um, moving on to the first thing that we would want to take up, would like to take up is I would want to uh, divert your attention to some of the key questions when we teach uh, social sciences are what is the content or what to teach? What is the curriculum that needs to be taught? Thankfully, this aspect ha has been taken care of by the various boards. So what to teach is very age specific. It is very uh, region specific, but it uh, gives the student where when I say what to teach, I mean that uh, what has to be taught in the social sciences, which is enabling the student to understand the society, enabling him to understand the whys and hows of society. What are the rules and mechanisms that govern the society? How is the environment around him formulated or uh, formed? So with that uh, aspect is taken care of by the various boards, as I said. The second thing that we move on to, the second key question that we move on to is how to create an engaging classroom. Now that is for every teacher, it is a million dollar question, how to create an engaging classroom in physical scenario itself, sometimes it becomes difficult, but uh, in virtual, now when it comes to virtual where the students and the teachers are become uh, bigger learners than the students, because definitely I feel the hands-on experience of students is sometimes much better than the teacher. So that of course becomes a very, very challenging situation for uh, the educators. The other question that uh, we uh, come across is how to teach? What is What are the tools and mechanisms that we use where we create a classroom which is truly inclusive, which, uh, which uh, engages the students, which is a student-centric? So these are some of the, the question two and question three is the question that we will be uh, today focusing on. When we look at uh, some of the aims of uh, teaching of social sciences, uh, broadly, if I say these aims are, uh, you know, making a compassionate global citizens, providing critical and active understanding of the current phenomena, learn to evaluate the pictures, documents, statistics, graphs, and 
various other uh, you know material so when i talk about compassionate global citizens somewhere i see that the aim of social science is also adding a lot of value to the life of a student when we see providing critical and active understanding of the current phenomena is honing his cog cognitive uh, skills and uh, the third is developing skill development the hands on skill development which uh, social science enable, enables a student to folk, uh, to develop the analytical his log uh, graph uh, you know graph analyzing statistic analyzing skills etc moving on further to uh, yes this is something i would want each one of you to uh, all of us in fact to focus on which is the role of a, the role of a teacher has been constantly changing so if i look at the uh, the teacher's role about 20 30 years back it changed but if i look at a role of a teacher say 3 months back today the role has drastically changed because we all are trying to fit in to a new environment to a new uh, scenario which we all are trying to you know cope up with so but uh, if you look at the teacher's role needs to be shifted from a source of knowledge to a facilitator in transforming information and knowledge because we know that knowledge is available at the press of a button and so knowledge has no bounds student has more access to knowledge than we as educators so what is then our role our role becomes uh, uh, as a facilitator where we help student to save information sift information in terms of whether the uh, in helping him to take uh, and taking him through the uh, the knowledge which is age specific knowledge which is uh, fruitful to him knowledge which helps him to apply his skills the other is the provide a variety of learning situations i'll come back to these in uh, over the course of my presentation and show that each child is engaged in learning actively encourage learners to indulge in collaborative learning provide help in the form of scaffolding so throughout the presentation dear teachers we will be primarily integrating two aspects one aspect is that we will be looking at the uh, the current uh, remote learning scenario and we will be trying to blend it with some technological and innovative techniques which bridges the gap between the physical classroom and the remote learning scenario so when i talk about providing learning variety of learning solutions I uh, would a uh, variety of learning uh, situations uh, is that there should not be one window through which the knowledge seeps in. There can be multiple avenues. Each each child is engaged in the learning actively. That is again a very challenging scenario, and a lot of role then is uh, re required is of the educators educators have a lot of responsibility in uh, trying to engage uh, the learners actively and not let them be passive recipients of knowledge also we will be focusing on how to develop collaborative learning during the course of the uh, presentation and to help in the form of scaffolds providing him the required uh, the required assistance which will help him build his knowledge further all right now uh, looking at uh, some of the uh, scenarios and some of the where the technology ways to get more from a virtual 
classroom and when we talk about some of the ways uh, to get more from a virtual technology classroom is we try to make reading active with digital annotation when i talk about making learning very active with digital annotation i mean you can constantly understand and improve retention instead of simply reading the text the reader also annotates uh, the reader also a reader who annotates annotation is a key piece uh, he analyzes thinks critically so please do not just have passive reading in the class the way we are most of the time used to and then don't wait for the throw uh questions to the readers let them analyze give them that time to read uh, read and then probably reflect so uh making reading active and uh, digital annotation is maybe you can when you're reading uh, when you're having the text being read in the class you can always ask the uh the students to constantly do a uh, research parallelly do a research a one minute two minute research on that topic and get back to you so use your digital platforms very effectively also help primary sources to come alive when you are we this is the biggest uh, advantage that we can uh, take from a technology based virtual classroom it is that we can help we can uh, help student uh, take through uh, a tour of the primary suppose you are teaching him um site of probably indus valley uh, civilization or you're trying to teach them solar system or you're trying to teach them any topic it is very important for you to simultaneously uh, your primary sources ready help them visualize help them understand because sometimes what happens is when we are talking about either the prehistoric times or the times which with which student is not familiar with the advantage the best thing is to help them relate help them take their journey into the primary sources we can always uh, use um, a uh, uh, um, video where the students are able to uh, understand the the probably the um, sites uh, the indus the rem the remnants of the indus valley uh, civilization you can take them through uh, humpy that can another be there are lovely sources which are live um, all over the uh, you can take them through this uh, various um, sites. The other thing that you could do is that, um, again, when teaching of geography, it becomes very important if you're taking them to some kind of vegetation, some kind of forest belt, or some kind of type of uh, probably extraction of minerals. So instead of just focusing on the book, it also becomes important. And it is uh, it lies handy to you if you take them through that particular uh, audio video, uh, visual aid. Then personalize instructions for unique students needs uh, again when you are in a virtual classroom it gives you a lot of time and scope to you know use different techniques for different uh, students with different abilities so be uh, personalized instructions becomes very important then another important and i'm going to use all these techniques through my uh, subsequent session then it becomes very important uh, when you talk about humanities uh, you talk about social sciences it becomes really important if you could pair it up uh, pair literature with digital events so there is no harm in uh, helping students uh, show some kind of uh, for example uh, if you are uh, showing them uh, teaching the younger students uh, in vedic age or probably 
you know, um, Buddhism, uh, Jainism, the heterodox sex, it is very good if you could, re, uh, you know, take them through some of the uh, real life stories of uh, Gautam Buddha, for stories of Jatakas, etc. So these can, that, that instills the interest and gradually you can wean them away and help them, you know, uh, segregate the facts from the, you know, what do you say, the story aspect of the whole thing. So pairing literature will always instill interest amongst the students. Create a classroom or student collaboration. This is very, please make your students effective stakeholders. Do not have that one track uh, knowledge, one track transaction of knowledge because children learn fast when they are involved they help them collaborate if you are uh, if it is also about knowledge don't dispense knowledge help them explore knowledge that is very important uh, all right yes moving on to some of the progressive teaching methodologies which again all these techniques which are which we are doing as progressive teaching methods are uh, aligned uh, with the virtual classrooms and they become very very handy when it comes so uh, yes when you talk about creating in uh, inclusive inquiry based uh, uh, learning inquiry based learning in the form of you need to throw questions to the uh, your uh, students help them uh, dig out knowledge do not serve the knowledge on a platter just help them explore and create that in inquisitiveness amongst the students and inclusive learning then is that keeping in mind the abilities and the differences among the various uh, abilities of the students and Accordingly, you design your uh, worksheets, you design your um, uh, resources, which help students of various. So here, of course, very important is uh, you have to also a little take uh, cognizance of multiple intelligence and you must understand, you must understand that there are uh, students in your class who have varied uh, you know, in uh, intelligence levels. So uh, you have to create, use different tools and techniques when you are taking through. And I always insist, and in all my workshops, I always insist that even when it comes to assessment, you must try and do assessment in such a balanced way that each and every student who has different abilities of learning abilities uh, should not should be at an advantage whichever uh, technique fits him best so that is very important again activity based teaching is uh, activity based teaching becomes important where i'm sure today all teachers across uh, our CBSE curriculum is designed such that uh, activity-based teaching becomes very, very important. And in every, uh, but when I, uh, activities should not be restricted to projects in terms of project files. Activity can also be now when you are in a virtual uh, setting, they should go beyond. The student should be able to use more of technology, encourage them to, you know, create their own resources and encourage them to, uh, to recreate certain aspects where they can uh, incorporate technology when it comes to activity based. Then, uh, of course, uh, the knowledge has to be the uh, student-centric approach, which is something which uh, I think CBSC has been uh, constantly uh, trumpeting that students should be at the center of all knowledge and all these are interlinked they are not compartmentalized 
the knowledge student is at the center of all knowledge then definitely you have to follow different approaches when it comes to you know uh, 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 helping student learn and also assessing them uh again these are collaboration critical thinking communication building a scientific temperament ideation collaboration as i all uh, already discussed that you have to collaborate do not pass knowledge do not transact knowledge help students construct knowledge help them explore critical thinking uh, expose them to the whys and applications and understanding and help them to recreate similar situations that is critical thinking so the knowledge part the uh, try and move up, away from rote learning as much as you can communication is yes this is something i want to speak for uh, when I say communication, how communication is so powerful when it comes to um, when it comes to virtual classroom is because this communication is not just about teacher talking to the students in those 30, 40 minutes. This is an overall communication where you do not, you keep hand holding the student even after the class is over. So you have to send in the messages. You have to kind of take their, uh, you know, that the, the, there is a saying that in virtual classrooms, it's a never ending period. The period continues because, you know, you are in the, the technology helps you uh, remain connected with the student. So the communication has to be very effective. What you are speaking, the student might not be able to retain at that point of time because somewhere uh, the virtual uh, aspect might deter this. So you should be very powerful in communication. What you have taught should also go to this uh, student as uh, some kind of an activity, some kind of notification. If the student has not learned, uh, understood, then you must find different ways. If the student has not understood a text, if the student has not understood a particular topic, there could be another way of giving him. Just send him a link of a particular thing or a, a, a youtube link or probably uh, you know you could just mm, create a diagram click a picture and send it to him you could have a, a chat with him i know this sounds tough but then uh, virtual learning is very effective and virtual learning honestly speaking if the teacher is very well prepared uh, virtual learning is often uh, something which is more effective than uh, physical learning as well. Helping students build a scientific uh, temperament uh, is that they need to be logical about everything. They should not accept, they should not accept knowledge as it is. They must question everything and then ideate Keeping that knowledge in mind, they should then come up with their own. Suppose they have read something, they must be able to recreate that. If it is, uh, they must be able to, when it comes to humanities, if it was in English, it could be that you're reading a poetry, you may recreate uh, a uh, poetry yourself. But when it comes to, you know, uh, social sciences, then it becomes very, very important the student to build his own perspective. So that perspective is essential for the educators. Help him develop a perspective. Do not uh pay too much of attention in his learning of uh, specific answers because then the essence of development mind's development is somewhere lost and constantly for years the student is only you know uh, glued to a uh, rote learning because he does get an artificial high when he gets uh, you know good marks when he uh, learns and reproduces 
and uh, the answers and he gets but what is the takeaway so 21st century skills help student to become uh, you know thinking individuals help them to become uh, contributing individuals again when you talk about what is blended learning blended learning is which combines classroom learning with online learning techniques in which students can in part control the time pace and place of the learning so for example uh, you know when you have your uh, virtual class there uh, the schools are often encouraging that today also this lecture will be recorded so that is if you want to go back if you want to revisit so that's a very uh, powerful aspect of blended learning uh, which comprises advocating a teacher designed blended learning model but now blended learning you have number of things but what would you prefer what is your design there is classroom learning there is e learning mobile learning webinars online courses tiktoks now you are empowered to create your what is then lesson planning you are empowered to create your own curriculum how well you blend the topic with number of techniques is a teacher should take the topic that the teacher is dealing with so for example in uh, if you're uh, dealing with civics or uh, tech talks could become very very powerful you know examples could become very powerful because building per tech talks help you build, help students build perspective it enhances their thinking it enhances their collaboration skills so these are some of the things but if you are doing a topic on history if you are trying to you know uh, teaching national uh, india's freedom struggle then addressing the wise would call for more research oriented and these are some of the techniques which you can uh, take recourse to now they have created a slide which shows you that uh, you know which shows you somewhere that uh, why is what is the need for innovative techniques so this very clearly it shows you a graph that what is the percentage of retention when a student is using different kind of methodologies so need for innovative technique and the way we will uh, see is how the graph of retention that is his ability to understand what he is learning student centered blend if you use student centered blended learning teacher led instructions web based assessments printed instructions all this are techniques of blended learning blended learning is not just teacher uh, transacting knowledge teacher usko gyan baat rahi hai wo nahi hai blended learning is not that in blended learning you partner with the students you collaborate with the students and you explore knowledge and how you explore knowledge is by helping students develop research abilities giving them the right kind of instructions helping them do web based assessments web based assessment is probably you are creating a small quiz or you are asking them to do a video or you are asking them to do a enact something and uh, you know Uh, enact something and uh, record and uh, then exhibit in front of the whole class where is the problem there is absolutely no problem do not it is our rigidity to accept uh, technology which becomes problem so why not encourage students there is no harm if if they can use 
uh, they, the students can use their mobiles for you know unnecessary social media engagement they can also use give them that kind of what they want to you know what makes their takeaway relevant that's very important you don't normally we think from our point of view we think notebook may come kare पांच छह क्वेश्चन सात क्वेश्चन वो करे हमारी कन्वीनियंस के लिए जो आंसर हमने बुक में डिक्टेट किया हुआ है एंड देन वी आर वेरी कन्वीनियंट स्टूडेंट डजेंट लाइक इट यू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाई विल यू रिलेट टू समथिंग व्हिच वी वर आल्सो डूइंग सम 30 टू 35 इयर्स बैक यू हैव टू क्रिएट relevance for your child it's an age of technology you must encourage them to use so the lecture would probably help him retain 5% a reading maybe 10% discussion would take it up to uh, 50% when discussion based teaching learning happens it helps student retain 50% of the content and you try it and the student will number one it will reduce bunking in your class it will reduce classroom disruption it will increase student engagement in the class experimentation and again research experimentation they're going beyond the knowledge then teaching others that's very effective when one topic has been done ask the students now if some child asks you a question after the topic has been taught try you don't answer instead somebody who already has understood let that child answer let encourage this you have to start taking a back seat and let the students take the uh of course when it comes to this is something very general that it, when it comes to using pedagogical techniques uh, otherwise also this is in virtual classroom i am very sure that all these techniques were you were using in physical classroom as well but what i have written in the center is that all these techniques which were you you were using uh, throughout in physical scenario now you integrate them with ict you have to find out ways you i mean i'm just giving you an example our entire uh, you know all these apps which today they are coming our uh, hero heroines they are creating those videos which can be collaborated one portion is being done and one person's uh um, you know he's they are all remotely producing their own portions and then coming up with the uh you know a, a common uh, structure and a common act so why can't we encourage something like this this is very healthy then uh of course audio visual approach which is uh, something which is the knowledge is there in front of you do not just wait have a, for this but very important thing is i think the uh, the technology and the kind of uh, portal you use the kind of technology you use the kind of frequencies of your uh, connections you use should be very very powerful and second thing i would recommend is for an on uh, virtual classroom of 30 minutes you have to work out uh, at least for 2 hours but once this has been done it will be like your permanent resource so uh, something like a simulation activities again that i have already said simulation could be model united nations in fact do not please don't stop them i'm sure i would want uh, you to please write on the chat are you people encouraging model united nations please please hold online model united nations just type a yes if you are doing uh, uh, because prepare your students online do that ask your school to give those slots to you from the risk, the already stipulated stuff uh, but do not do conduct model united nations 
and conduct them online and i'm sure they'll come out much much better than uh, what they have and in this scenario you can not just do an intra school you can do an inter school you can do an inter state you can collaborate with various uh, nations and go beyond wherever but uh, my strong recommendation is please uh, to all the schools that uh, i don't know till when the schools will open because every week we get to have a newer notification sometimes july sometimes august that is a very different scenario we don't know but yes why don't you practice this this will be a very nice uh, and encourage because uh, as i always said that the there is a lot of responsibility on the human uh, the social science teacher to build you know thinking individuals global citizen we use this word very often and we use it um, very frequently global citizens but the and again we see so much of crisis because we are not honestly the we are not shifting from our age old teaching techniques till we do not shift from that we will never be able to produce global citizens till we keep saying this is the right answer give them open ended questions children love it why should they all write you know i i remember when there used to be open ended questions so they were very scared and they said ma'am if we write answer which is not in the book then so i would always encourage them no you can write your own perspective but you have to craft the answers accordingly that this is one way of looking at but in my opinion questions me hota hai what in your opinion to jab what in your opinion hai to aap kyun unko encourage karte ho ki aapko yahi opinion likh you please don't uh, give them that freedom and then they are going to enjoy knowledge yes so something like uh, case studies become very important in uh, and these are some things for especially the social science teachers uh, these days can and because we are a little tied we have technology at hand we can explore the world but there is a restriction to children cannot go out they cannot do too many interviews so we encourage them to do case study for every topic encourage them and tell them to come up with what is their perspective on that so for i've taken your example of uh, narmada bachao andolan so you could the inquiry based questions could be why was narmada uh, uh, bachao andolan even started why did they need to save narmada what were the modes of campaigns do you think are these relevant today would you suggest what could be today's scenario so you introduce them to the campaigns to the protest mechanisms which were uh, aptly which were prevalent in way back but what would be if this kind of a situation occurs then what will be the best mechanism to you know uh launch a protest considering that in today's scenario as a social science teacher it becomes your responsibility teachers to create that sensitivity because we are a very diverse nation we have different religions caste ethnic groups sub caste uh, various kinds of you know levels layers and layers of identity and in that we we have to ensure and you know imbibe in them to even if you protest even if you raise an issue you have to be very inclusive you have to be sensitive less 
you hurt the other communities feeling you as a social science teacher it becomes very important for you to <clears throat> help the students understand the difference between difference and division difference is not wrong we are all different but the moment we use our caste color creed and how many teachers we today around the world we are having so many instances which gives an opportunity to the social science teacher to play the right kind of role we have racial issues uh, uh us simmering with racial issues encourage the students to research encourage them even if it is a primary wing encourage them to develop an understanding a perspective that why george floyd was killed what is this kind of protest right what could be other forms of protest these are the thought provoking issues which as a social science teacher you need to address what could be the new forms of protest how you need to uh, be sensitive the, the the whole sad story is when you see i mean around you the you know the best of the politicians the best of the leaders the way they are using social media the way they are so insensitive towards making statements these are the issues as a social science teacher this is the culture you need to inculcate that is what is global knowledge is you know how much you teach the student will not remember how you taught them it is not the knowledge about the narmada bachao andolan it is what you are teaching through the case study is his understanding of environmental issues understanding of uh gender issues understanding of the mechanisms of protest ask them to do research on meda patikar so these are some of the ways that you need if you encourage discussion and i underline i mean discussion when i say discussion it is not you giving them knowledge so please uh, use audio video visual uh, approaches where you use flipped classroom in uh, flipped classroom activities flipped classroom is a video based question you first should now when you are doing this you must send a video to pre uh, a lay video link probably a day before and or uh, maybe in the morning and the student is expected to see that video and come to class then you can then the testing grasping power of the student is seen for every video you show every audio visual aid you show you must be ready with questions whether it is a worksheet i'm not saying that every av you show has to have an extensive worksheet but you should be ready with at least two to three core questions that becomes very important uh, of course i'm uh, for virtual uh, teaching learning it becomes a very essential that please use interactive slide shows use presentations because what student sees 
in front of him and when you're speaking it uh, uh, this superimposes and it kind of makes understanding very clear so please don't go i mean just record a lesson in terms of if even if you're recording a lesson it should have either a video or a, a, a you know a slide uh, presentation and you must speak taking uh, aligning uh, your lecture with the presentation audio uh, activities the benefits are they increase concentration they enhance uh, listening skills again interactive teaching has to have a lot of concept maps for everything you should have an assignment now the difference between physical teaching and virtual teaching is every day whatever you're teaching give them two questions three questions give them probably five mcqs but let them you know test their knowledge let them do it at least let them indulge in that activity so uh, i have uh, you will be getting uh, web links so uh, ankesh sir will will uh, would be circulating i have created a sheet where there are lots of web links that you can uh, use and show uh, then these are the various portals which depends what kind of portals you would be using you can then uh, the other thing is youtube videos again uh, youtube videos you have to be very careful when you're sharing with your students because uh, that is why i most of the schools have their own uh, learning um, portals schools have their own resources but if you're using youtube links just be very careful about the ads sometimes which reflect so also podcast becomes very important and podcast in today you can use a lot of uh, uh, podcast not just as helping them here but also help giving them assignments where they could do podcasts and uh, question podcast is Rec uh, audio recording you could do you know it is you can do it right from your phone itself you can record a class on phone and or probably a topic or probably some kind of uh, information and you could send it to them which they might like to hear and uh, podcast uh, you can also use podcast as means of uh incorporating this tool when they are doing some project so encourage if they cannot do physical interviews if you have given them a project and if they cannot do physical interviews insist that do a telephonic interview record and you know attach it with so i think uh, most you should the first term the first term uh, projects uh the first term uh, you know ass internal assessment can be very comfortably be done during these days and that can be and children will really enjoy because they love uh, their hands on experience with uh, technology so please that 20 marks of in, uh, internal assessment which you are having for your first term you can use that time or you know um, assessment giving them assessment which is ICT compliant. Of course, project-based learning again is a teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time. So when you give them a project, let it not be like a project file. I would recommend uh, give them a, and rather I I would want you to kind of help bring the class together, pose a question, and help them identify what as a team they want to do a project on. 
it also becomes important in project based learning that you integrate learning you integrate learning with various uh, you integrate learning with various uh, you know the subjects various streams so the basics is publicly announce the project product project driving question or challenge need to know these are the things and these are the aspects that you should fit the project based learning is a very good example of collaborative learning this is a 21st century skills it helps promote students voice and choice encourage a lot of feedback and revision in the whole thing so for example uh, ankesh sir could i have uh, the audio of Trist with destiny played yes ma'am just give me a minute yeah so again audio this enhances listening skills and it it uh, helps student uh, you know uh, develop an interest because they would never do it alone this is a uh, skill that you need to kind of develop so this is a small class interactive class which i have created you can create a screen like this uh, maybe you can you know what according to nehru should be our endeavor now that the freedom has been attained what is the singing dance of the ganga for nehru and for india how does nehru describe achievement of freedom so pose these questions okay so ma'am i'm ready shall i play yes yeah long years ago we made a trip with this time and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge not only or in full the stroke of the midnight just hold on a second ma'am i'll replay uh, it's okay ankesh no problem i think as uh, social science teachers we all have uh, you know this is something which is us which we've grown up hearing this but you know it becomes important for the social science teacher to take these primary resources in the class when i mean these are the primary resources please feel free to go beyond your books don't give them this as a homework that is when the children hear along with everyone then definitely the level of understanding changes similarly for junior classes uh, primary classes you can just do a who am i kind of an activity and you know do a quick quiz and let them you know you just need to trigger their curiosity that is important rest will be taken care of so who am i dilli chalo give me blood and i will give you freedom these are things which should not the student should not be learning them he should be exposed to these and to do them then please also you know focus on why of these slogans we teach them the entire content and we tell them that this is the slogan given by the uh, by uh you know this particular leader why did shastri give the slogan jai jawan jai kisan why was the need for him to give this kind of a mantra or a slogan why did he want the to hail the farmers and the soldiers similarly why are we you know recognizing the efforts of whom we are calling our saviors the health um, uh, workers the 
the community cleaning workers, the police, why are we calling them angels and why are we eulogizing their efforts? Why are we clapping for them? The need of the hour is such. They are, they are uh, the vanguards of the society at the moment. Because all around the media, all around the, the kind of news is so distorted. As a social science teacher, as a history teacher, please help them to understand and analyze the news. Tell them not to be carried away with what they see in uh, news in the media. Help them build their perspective. So every time you walk in the class, every time you open the session, please spend five minutes on the current scenario. The moment you do it, the child will develop his liking for the subject, his interest in the subject. We immediately take him to something which he cannot relate with. So, I mean, why should Modi do a man ki baat? Why sh what is the essence? What is the message he's trying to pass? Do these analysis. Because sadly, there he, the, the kids hear all sorts of, you know, unwanted information in their drawing rooms. It is the responsibility of history teacher. It is the responsibility of the social science teacher to help them understand, discern, address the whys. Moving on to beautiful, you could do, ask them, give them a project of creating an e brochure. Help them use this integrating their uh, computer class with a history class. Help them to create an e brochure, ask them to do a small film. So maybe students could do, to do a travel. Uh, this could be for class six teachers. Help them to do an e brochure for Mohan. You plan a trip day one, day two. What do you see? Uh, what do you see? Uh, uh, 5 to 7 uh, p.m. with uh, the dockyard at Lothal. Dholavira, bring out the main traits. Harappa, uh, visiting the Great Bath. Let them, they will automatically, they will have that interest. What we do is, we help them, we, they don't understand, how would they know anything? They just have a picture in front of them and they have few dots, which you call them sites. And they are confused. Class six child gets very confused. A dot meaning site, which he has to mark. He cannot relate. Then there is a picture with half finished walls and we say okay this is the great bath we see lothal and we say this is a dockyard expose them to that storytelling is a very important especially children and human beings love storytelling listening to stories They've grown up are, across human beings have grown up. What was history if it wasn't a story? So you do extend, have uh, extensive use of it. Do not get into the rut of finishing, finishing curriculum, first term, second term, mark. You know, it's really uh, as it is the child is under a lockdown situation then he has to constantly look at the screen. He can't even look at his teacher. He can't even have the, he's not even sitting with his peer. 
So it is a challenging situation for them. They're losing onto that time which they spent with their, uh, you know, uh, the classmates. So you have to bring the lesson alive. That is very important. You try doing all these things, I'm sure there'll be zero bunking and there'll be zero absenteeism in the class. The children will look forward. Tweak your assessments. Give less questions, increase the marks. Give newer techniques. Help them use technology. At least they will not be on WhatsApp and Insta and other things. They'll be doing something, you know, more relevant. They'll be, if they know they have to make an e-brochure and submit it tomorrow, they'll definitely reduce their time on, you know, exploring or surfing the social media sites. Again, uh, for geography, Flip classroom is a very uh, powerful use extensively teachers use various channels, you know, Ge National Geographic, History Channels, Khan Academy, and there are so many. I think suddenly the internet has become so rich, but you have to see, you have to, the big bang theory. Please take them through the journey. Help them understand. Help them make a disaster management kit. It's very important. And tell them to do a video when they made that kit. Why did they add those things which they added? Moving on to civics. In civics, simulation becomes very, very important. Simulation becomes extremely important as it becomes extremely important as uh, uh, it brings in perspective. It brings in a lot of it brings in perspective it brings in a lot of uh, personal uh, personal uh, perspectives into it it opens a humanities student it opens a social science student it helps them explore it helps them become a uh, relate the but do not only ask them to do not just ask them to recreate the oldest uh, older uh, scenes. Ask the, you have to go beyond. That is a 21st century classroom. You have to kind of uh, go beyond what they. Ankesh, I don't know my webcam. Uh, am I visible or audible? Yes, ma'am. Both are working fine. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, uh, democracy is not something we have by divine right. It is a hard won privilege granted to us by those who came before us and fought for it. Bring such quotes and help students develop curiosity pose ethical dilemma questions to them civics is all about it is not just about understanding the structure of the government it is about the government's ability to take the decisions which are beneficial for the entire uh, country. And in that, some people gain and some people lose. It is very easy to point fingers at the governments sitting in the 
please do not encourage these things. We have a great role to play. And these are great times to make your classes very, very interesting. Give them a small situation and tell them to relate to current scenario. Do up a video and send it to you. Ask them to make four to five slide presentation, not beyond that. Don't flood them with homeworks. Give them a daily task. That is very essential. We did this uh, project-based learning, again, integrated uh, curriculum. Um, there was something I was wanting to. Uh, yeah. Um, Ankesh, can we have this uh, ground reporting of COVID-19 video played? Video, yeah. Monica, can you make me a presenter? I'm a
Hello. Yes, ma'am. You can share your screen now. All right. Uh, is the screen visible now? No, ma'am. The screen is not visible. You need to reshare it. Uh, okay. I am unable to reshare. I can't see that box actually. The box could be on your right now. There would be a small control panel if you can look at an orange arrow and click on that the orange yellow will give you the entire toolbox yes that's that exactly i had minimized so that was yes. it i'll i'll just look just wait a bit Yes, ma'am, the screen is visible now. Is the screen visible now? Yes, ma'am, the screen is visible. The, no, uh, it's me or it is the presentation? The presentation. I can read out a COVID-19 video activity. Yes, yes, thank you. So uh, again, uh, this was just a uh, small clipping, which was and instantly the activity was created, keeping the current scenario in mind. So it becomes very important for civics teachers. So the the you know the killing of uh, George Floyd could be taken up as a case study. It could be a small video, could be depending upon which class you are taking, encourage that. Similarly, here the video talks about COVID-19 uh, uh, ground reporting, a report from a, uh, of a news report. And uh, what is the migration of these workers being called? Why do they have to leave Noida? Or what are the arrangements that were made for these workers? And you may actually, you know, uh, without introducing biases, you could take the ideation and the creativity then is that when the students come up with their own uh, ideas of what could better have happened, and how the situation could have been made better or probably if yes it was uh, was it right to send this uh, these people to their cities or was it uh, not right and you really need not 
do a closure to those questions. You should let, I mean, let the discussion remain because in, in such cases where there are ethical dilemmas, where both the things are right, they want to go or they do, should not be going, but they must be aware of their understanding. So this is kind of uh, a very integrated curriculum approach in which you, uh, when I say integrated curriculum approach, you can take up the statistics, you can talk about the, you know, the geography uh, part of the demography part that what percentage of, uh, you know, uh, the people living in that state were migrant workers or they were, and again, you could integrate it also with the, um, you know, uh, the political science in terms of what are the, the various levels of government, how the states have been now empowered to take, uh, you know, given more uh, empowerment in terms of decision making. And so these are the things you can take a topic and treat it fully. That is very important because normally what happens is that we take a topic and we treat it in terms of uh, pockets and uh, um, compartments like history, geography, you know, but what we should today try and develop is a very, very integrated approach. So in the end, I would just want to take important tips to be followed in virtual teaching is well, number one very important teachers, I would really request that you should be, be prepared. And I'm telling you, once your resource is prepared, it will last you a couple of years. And uh, again, don't reuse your classroom curriculum in the sense, don't try and every date go with a newer technique. You may use it after some time, but try and go with the newer technique. Each day, somebody, sometime it could be a simulation, some other time it could be just a video recording, uh, or it's a quiz today, or it is a discussion, or maybe it is a reading where the explanation and analysis is done. Again, I'm saying refrain from monotonous reading because in virtual classrooms, it the concentration span will only work if you feel real, uh, connected with the, uh, the teaching or the teaching learning process. Prepare your resources well and always answer the questions. That becomes a very, very important aspect because children are not meeting you. They can't catch you in the corridors. They can't come in their free periods. So if you don't answer the question that they've uh, you know, texted you or sent you as an email, that question will always remain unanswered. So try that time, but structure yourself. Of course, I'm not saying that you have to be completely available to them, but you know, you can always, first is very important is set the rules of your class straight. You may always tell these are my timing, this to this, you can text, this is by two within 24 hours or by next day you will be getting a response and if you don't get please remind me again there is no harm but and that will also help you know otherwise sometimes because teachers are so overloaded or so overburdened that at times it happens that a query you might uh, be slipped from your mind a query might be slipped from your mind and what, and the parent comes uh, running, the, he gets paranoid and he comes running to the administration that the teacher is not answering. So be very clear, set your expectations, set your class code right. If you've not done, then maybe when you go back uh, tomorrow, uh, would you, uh, these are holidays of course, when you go back to your class and please make the expectations right create a white paper that this is it we will be following these kinds of tools in this class in case of any problems please keep your systems ready please keep you know these are certain rules and i am very sure if you follow these rules things will definitely yeah, and the classroom will become more interactive and effective uh live teaching should be done with a lot of care uh, again recorded is like a film which you send you can have number of takes and all 
but when it comes to recorded teaching i think uh, that is the time when you really be uh, sorry when it is live teaching you should be very clear that uh, in first five minutes you are doing this next 10 minutes this so once you are planned so you accordingly engage your students and when they are engaged your class goes you know it's a win win situation why we are uh, talking so much about engaging classroom in remote learning is primarily because somewhere we are not doing the right kind of uh, our homework so thank you teachers um, this is all for today in this session and uh, let's take up any queries and questions which you have Your voice is breaking, Ankish. Is it better now, ma'am? Yes, now it's better. And there was one question, how to encourage children to collaborate virtually? How to encourage students to collaborate virtually? Yes, uh, you know, uh, collaborate is you give them a common project. When you give them a common project, in that you can again divide the roles and responsibilities, help them, in, uh, encourage them to you know instead of giving individual projects give them uh, and again when it comes to teaching divide the portions you do, uh, give an overview of the chapter and let students take turns to further explain uh, um, those things or maybe you can ask them uh, that you will be taking a presentation next day and uh, come up with this presentation four slides to each student to add two two slides and then uh, this topic can be dealt you explain give them an overview instead of reading in the class you ask them to do a presentation each child to contribute three slides and one person one child can you know collate all the information and then they can do presentation of their own parts so the next question is from Kavita ma'am. It's basically a different problem altogether. Uh, though she says that they encourage critical thinking in classroom, but there has been certain situations wherein the teacher child asks, ma'am, why we are doing this particular stuff? Then the teacher does not give them uh, the right answer and do not appreciate their critical thinking. How do we handle such situations? So uh, number one, uh, I would say that <clears throat> If this is a question from a teacher, I think it is a question from a coordinator. What I can feel is that uh, so what very important is that as a management, as a uh, you know administration, you have to be clear as to uh, your expectations towards the teachers that rote learning should not be encouraged and critical thinking will only develop when the children will be able to present their own view and that view is accepted and that view is encouraged and how you encourage that view is that you know you give them you don't cut marks so if the projects are there and so again in the answers when they are formulating now this problem normally occurs is when the teacher has uh, given them an uh, um, you know a test and the students are not writing the specified answers which were which they had written in their notebook and uh, so the marks are cut and so the critical thinking may not be enhanced because the student wanted to give their his own perspective but the question framing whether it is for a project or whether it is for a pen and paper test it is very important it should be very clear do you want a perspective is it a knowledge-based question is it a question of his understanding of the situation 
So I'm very sure that if the questions are formulated in a way, if you are asking a mention, mention four points, it is completely a knowledge question. So this child will only going to mention. Again, described is a knowledge question, but it expands the horizon of the answer. When you're encouraging critical thinking, then analyze in your opinion. These are the kind of things encouraged, but then the teachers have to be, you know, as a department, uh, a social science department, the HODs have to take that call along with their teachers that these are the aspects which we will be encouraging. And again, um, I'm sure this problem will be solved. The next question is from Mr. Do uh, from Dr. Khan. How do we make interesting uh, economic lessons in a social science classroom? So uh, I'll give an example. Economic lessons has to be, you know, related in terms of real life. For example, project-based learning. I remember way back when I was a teacher, we did a project. With this was we did a project with the uh, one was which we did with the primary school and the other was with the senior school. So if it is for the senior uh, school, so they created uh, first I will address the senior school um, economics. They created a virtual uh, a project where they had to create an economic model of Indian economy. So for example, if it is today's scenario, if it's a question is from 11 and 12 what is the economic uh, you know uh, conditions how would you create a model by which the indian economy benefits how this the post lockdown economy come up with a project which will help it create a uh, you know a functional model of a post lockdown economy uh, likewise if you're doing uh, in class 9 and 10 and economics then, of course, you know, uh, for example, in your ninth, there is chapter on human resource and in your 10, it is globalization. So again, globalization chapter in class 10 can very well, well be dealt during this uh, time when the MNCs are uh, the, going for a toss and what will be the post corona uh, economy be like. And uh, uh, again, if you're doing uh, integrating economics in the primary and the uh, middle school level, then the usage of money, the money economy, or uh, you can integrate it into a PBL, a project-based learning, where you can do a project which has a working economy integrated into it, and you have, uh, you know, like uh, I remember the project that I was talking about in uh, project based learning was a project on newspaper. So the, 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 the group had to come up with their own newspaper. So if all subjects were involved, the, uh, you know, they had to go and uh, check with the GSM of the paper or quality of the paper, the costing of uh, printing, then um, uh, the purchasings of the various things. So these were various things you can integrate. And uh, economics, I think, can be very well uh, a topic which can be integrated very well by giving a lot of current examples and relating them and helping them do a lot of research. When I say research, I don't mean big documents. When I say revert research is trying to explore the situation take them out of their books everything has to be related with real life situations okay uh, ma'am the next question is can you share some tips to uh, do map work especially in a uh, virtual classroom scenario So they, uh, when you're doing map work, I mean, uh, I don't know which portal you're using, but there are certain uh, portals, uh, Teams, Microsoft Teams has 
the map uh, integration. So that is that you can you will only have to use the e maps and uh, that will be a challenge definitely. But uh, the only thing is you take up the map from the net and the students can simultaneously uh, have it uh, do it on the paper because uh, helping them do on a, a screen is then depend upon whether you are empowered with that technology or not but otherwise you can use the maps from the net and hover them and use them or on the uh, you can use them in the power presentations but yes it can be done i'm sure it's not a big challenge for uh, Uh, so there are not many questions, but due to paucity of time, we won't be able to take all of them. So the last question for the day, we will be again following up on the questions that we have received through a follow up mail. So the last question, ma'am, that we have received is how to ensure that all students are participating in a flipped classroom. The, the how they in the, how you ensure is uh, you know a very nice technique was. Uh, you randomly when you show them a video so you after that you tell them that today i will be using i will be questioning all the students that's one of the techniques with alphabet a and maybe next i'll be using r or uh, uh, simultaneously another thing how can they all participate is why don't you ask if they are not too young, if it's a middle school or a secondary school, then they can be asked to collect that uh, information. Each child can be given one turn that he needs to collect the uh, video and which he is going to send it to everyone through you, of course, you have to see it first and then that can be and let him become uh, and uh, with your help, he can create a questionnaire so he feels very important because if you send in a video they might just come back without even looking at the video but the moment they know that okay today the video was selected and prepared and the assignment has been prepared by you know rahul or mohit or gaurav or shrut so they, they become very active in that but yes you have to hold hold that with that will reduce your work as well and um, you'll be have, they'll be developing those skills of questioning skills. So that's it for the day. We'll be following up on the questions that we have received uh, through a follow-up mail. Uh, thank you everybody for joining in and taking out time for this particular session. I can see few queries on the chat regarding the recording of this webinar, uh, this webinar and the feedback. That would be shared through a follow-up mail that would be received in an hour's time after the webinar is over. So you'll receive, uh, do, don't forget to check your inbox and your spam folder in case you do not receive the mail. The mail would have the link for the feedback for us, any feedback that you would like to share and the recording of today's session. Thank you everybody for joining in. Thank you ma'am for taking out time and giving such a nice presentation. Thank you so much Ankesh. Thank you Monica and thank you everyone. And feel free to send in your queries and I will get them and I'll ensure that we uh, answer your uh, questions. Thank you. Yeah. Monica, can you end the session?